Hi everybody. It was a few months ago when I had these uh, matching pair of Tektronix P6015 um, probes, high voltage probes rated for 20 kV each. And um, I had those attached to my IGBT output here and here, which only goes up to a thousand or less than a thousand volts, only a few hundred, so really not necessary, but good for calibration. And this is what I got. There's there's one voltage, there's the other voltage. Do use the math function to have channel one minus channel two. And I was expecting to get a nice clean uniform square wave going all the way across. That did not happen clearly. So something was wrong with these. So I went around to the um, Tektronix P5200 differential probe that I've been making a lot of videos about recently. And here it is, the finished product with the, the extra high voltage resistor divider network. And you know, I got all this shielding on it because I did this, I did a test like this a few, a couple weeks ago, and there was a lot of high frequency noise when I had this attached to my, um, high fr to my uh, spark gap side of the Tesla coil, I was getting spikes in excess of 30 kV with respect to ground and that was not good. So what I did was I put this big aluminum plate or several pieces of sheet metal all around underneath everything and that is that basically serves as ground. I've got my ground connections. One of these goes to the floor and the other to the ceiling tiles and um, that's all clamped together with a copper bar and weighted down even more with a section of railroad track. And of course that all goes up here and then very clean copper strip ground terminal here and everything. That's where all the grounds go. I got all these copper strip for extra grounding to my current transformers and the top shield here, I gave, uh, I replaced one of the wooden legs with aluminum leg and we got all these steel masses to weigh it down and make good contact and of course the probe itself and the cans just resting on the aluminum plate is ground and we got lots of other copper strips going down to the aluminum plates for very adequate grounding and of course on the spark gap too. I put some aluminum tape on the outside of that for some grounded shielding. So hopefully when I get this working tonight, I should see a nice clean square wave going all the way across. And also I won't be seeing any horrendous spikes. So I'm going to put it on my uh, solid state side first, measure at low voltage and then We'll measure high voltage upwards of plus minus 10 kV on the rotary spark gap side. Okay, let's see what we got here. Look at that, and that's what I'm looking for. A nice, clean square wave going all the way across. This is the primary current. We're looking at, multiply this by 10, we get 100 amps per division. And on this one, multiply by 1,000, so we got 500 volts per division. You move that up and you can see it's going plus minus 250 volts or so. And that's exactly what I want to see out of this, out of this high voltage probe. So now I'm going to put it on the uh, rotary spark gap side and see what we get. And here's the setup. I've got the differential probe hooked up directly to the terminals of the rotary spark gap. Got very thorough ground connection, of course, 
all these cables, all the ground connections in these cables are in one way or another hooked up to the ground plane here. And on top of this is just a little glass prism that I have so I can easily monitor from a distance the, uh, the overrange indicator LED in case there's any extreme voltage spikes that are going to be potentially damaging to this thing. And also one more thing. Before I forget, I gotta change the, the range button on here. So the total voltage division for this thing is gonna be not 1,000, but 10,000, 10,000 to one. Okay, let's see what we got this time. Well, this looks much better. We're looking at about 12 kV from here to up there. And then of course the uh, we get the spark going in the rotary spark gap and then it jiggles around a little bit for plus minus a couple kV. And of course this up here is the, uh, the primary current at 100 amps per division. All right, now I'm gonna run it again. This time I'm gonna crank up the Variac full blast and very carefully monitor the little prism over there to uh, make sure I don't get any voltage, any, uh, make sure that little red LED doesn't turn on indicating I've got a over range, over voltage on the input. I was intently watching that prism over here to see if that little red LED would be shining underneath it, the overrange LED, and I didn't see anything. So I guess that means there was no significant voltage spikes that could damage the probe. All right, let's look at this again. Hmm. Oh, there it is. This time it started out the, on the negative side of the 60 hertz wave and we got a little more than 20 kV with respect to ground. That's where it started and then the spark closed and a little bit of oscillation here. I would expect that because it's not going to be a perfect short circuit across that gap. It's going to have some resistance so there's going to be some voltage drop along with it. Let me line them up here and we can see that they are pretty much exactly in phase, indicating that the, the spark is indeed a resistive load or a resistive element 
Well, after all this time, it seems like I finally have a very good, very reliable, high voltage, high bandwidth probe that I can use to measure the voltage, the, uh, the differential voltage, very important so I can measure the voltage directly across the, uh, the rotary spark gap and the capacitor bank here and of course the primary coil. I can measure them all individually along with the primary current going through this current transformer and also we got secondary current going through that current transformer back there. And of course, I can measure the voltage on the output of the IGBT H bridge. And I'm going to have lots of data over the next couple of weeks. Lots of data that I can use to analyze the difference between the solid state Tesla coil driver and the classical spark gap Tesla coil driver. See which one is more efficient, which one gives louder or louder or quieter sparks which one gives you know a greater spark length per unit input power i'll be measuring power with the uh, old school analog watt meter here i did have a digital watt meter but the the high frequency noise was just too much for it and it totally messed it up so got to use analog for that i'm going to call it quits for tonight now because both I and Mr. Tesla up here are getting high on the, all the ozone gas coming from the spark discharge. See you next time.